Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If the Lord has been good to you, let's give God the sign of bigger praise, and bigger sign of worship you can give him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. I said, let's give the Lord the biggest praise and worship that you can give him. Amen. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of God this morning and to see all of you in this first Sunday in the month of December. Amen. The Lord has been faithful. Amen. Amen. We greet all of you all with Jesus joy. Amen. We want to take this opportunity to welcome all our visitors and guests who may be worshiping with us maybe for the first or second or even third time here at SNBC in the village. We thank God for you, and if you're worshiping with us virtually, we thank God for you. Amen. We want you to know, we want to know more about you. Tell us your name, where you're from, and who you are so we can connect with you on a more personal level. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Barlow, and the entire SNBC family, we welcome you to the Sanctuary of Praise. Come on, y'all. Let's put our hands together for our visitors and guests. You're welcome to the Sanctuary of Praise. You're welcome. You are welcome to the sanctuary of praise. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together one more time for our visitors and guests. It is first Sunday. Amen. Amen. First Sunday. Amen. We want to celebrate and remember and reflect on what our Lord and our Savior did for us over 2,000 years ago by dying on Calvary. How many know that he lives today? Come on, I, I said, how many of you truly know that he is alive and he is well? Amen. We're going to be blessed by our morning hymn this morning. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Amen. Put your hands together for our praise team as they bless us with our morning hymn. Yeah. 
Come on, somebody in this place. If you know that the Lord lives, give him praise and worship. Let us not to be cavalier about this moment. Because if you're fearful, you don't have to be because he lives. If you are uncertain about tomorrow, you don't have to be anymore because he lives. I wish I had about 10 of y'all and I'll make 11 that can testify that you know that the Lord lives. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. He lives. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. Paul, in the Corinthian letter, in the 11th chapter, verse 23 says, For I have received from the Lord which I passed on to you on that night when he was betrayed. That was Jesus. The Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat together. same way he also took the cup after supper and said this is my cup the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me let us drink together the Bible says they sung a hymn and marched to the Mount of Olives can we get one more rendition because he lives and that's not too much that last phrase because he lives everybody if you would just stand all over this place and help us sing together this is your opportunity to worship God if you know that he lives sing with a loud voice this morning because he lives everybody if you know that he lives I can face tomorrow Come on, church. Because he lives, all my fears are now gone. Because I know he holds the future, my tomorrow. And life, how many you know that life is worth living now? Before you met Jesus, you didn't know what living was. But now that you know Jesus, you know that life is worth living. the old church. These are the hymns that brought us over. Because he lives. All my fear is gone. Yes, Lord. You know why I'm smiling? You know why I can smile even though I got bills that need to be paid? You know why I'm smiling sometimes even though I don't feel at my best? I'm smiling because he lives. 
And I wish I had anybody that can get with your boy this morning, that can smile with me. Now, some of y'all are frowning. I don't know why you're frowning. You ought to be glad. The Lord lives. Pastor, he lives. Deacons, he lives. Praise team, he lives. Church, he lives. Give God praise because he lives. Is there anybody in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get up early this morning to have quiet church. The Lord has been good to me, Flash. The Lord has taken care of me, Mama Paulo. The Lord has taken care of me. He has looked past my faults and seen all of my needs. Yeah, yeah, yes, he has, Candy. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, Brother Lemmy, cries out hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, we're going to continue to worship, and we're going to worship God and give it. How many of you know that you're blessed on today? Come on, I said, how many of you know that you are blessed? You are blessed not necessarily by what you have. You're blessed by who you know. You're blessed by who has you and who has you. His name is Jesus. We're thankful that how you continue to sow in this ministry is because of your tithe and offering. We're able to do ministry here at SNBC. Thank you so much for your obedience and your sacrifice and how you pour. For you all that sow into this ministry virtually, we thank God for you. Listen, there are several ways you can give here at SNBC. You can give through Cash App, GiveLify, PayPal. You can mail your tithe and offering to this location, or you can drop your tithe and offering in those boxes behind you to my left and to your right. Amen. However you choose to give, we just want to make sure you have that opportunity. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. Come on, let me hear y'all say we're blessed. Thank you so much for your tithe and offering as they come into this place on today. Amen. Thank you so much for continuing to standing as we prepare to recite our vision statement with clarity and with conviction on today. Amen. This reminds us of who we are as a local church. We always want to keep this in front of us. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. We see people of all creeds, nations, and genders learning about him. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. We see God's principles at work in every arena of life. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together. We see transformation. And let it start with me. Put your hands together for our vision statement on today. Amen. 
Amen. Our scripture will be coming from John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Hear the word of the Lord on today. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only, one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him already has been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but the people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear of their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they're doing what God wants. The word of God for the people of God. God's people said together, thanks be unto God. We're going to be blessed by a fervent prayer by our very own elder Bruce Hams at this time. soul in here today, Lord, that cannot utter these words, thank you. Not only have you been good to us, but you're good to us right now. So we humble ourselves before you right now. First of all, asking you to forgive us our transgressions. Realizing, Father, not everything we done was right found grace and mercy in you. So this day, Lord, we ask that you allow us to worship you right now in spirit and in truth. Yes, Lord. Remove anything that will hinder our thoughts and our prayers. Oh, God, we be very careful to always give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Yes, Lord. For you are worthy to be praised. Lord, right now, allow this shepherd to give him a word that will pierce between the joints and the mouth to help us on this tedious journey called life. Again, Father, we ask that you give us a spiritual ear today to hear what does say. That you continue to bless, bless his wife, bless his family. And Lord, bless this church as a whole. And then, Lord, when it's all over, on this side, the troubling war will all be over. And we'll study war no more. And we thank you, Lord, for preparing a place where the wicked will cease from.
church say amen. Amen. We give God all the praise, all the glory, all the honor today because we are sold out. Our heart is fixed and our mind is made up. Amen. We give God all the praise on today. We want to continue to worship God through the word of God. We pray that you pray for the man of God on today, that God would use him in a very special way, that he would anoint him afresh to give a word to his people. We ask that you will pray with him and for him as our bishop prepares to preach the word to us, that your heart might receive what God has for you on today. Amen. Amen. Yes to you, Will. Yes to you, Will. Whatever you decide to do. Yes to your way. Yes to your way. Lord, touch right now. Move in this place. Break up any fallow ground that makes it. That your word may fall on good ground. That it might pour you for fruit in its season. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have your way. church say amen. Again, we are so appreciative for our praise team and our musicians and put your hand together for them. Amen. I thank God again for another day. Uh, God is so awesome. He is so awesome. God has brought me, and I'm pretty sure you can do the same. Be secure. And one of the things is good to get to get a certain age. Amen. I was sitting there, and uh, every now and then, Ellie, him, and I, we we tease each other and because of. He said to ourself, I looked at him, I said, Ella, I said, do we supposed to stand when we take communion? <laughs> we, need, we, we need some sitting down time in here. And Ella said, when I get to pray, I'm going to tell him to sit down. I said, it's okay with me. <laughs> That's okay with me. some age, you need some sitting down time, amen, amen, if you, if, now you can't appreciate that unless you're there, but let me tell you, you will get there, amen, I need, I need to serve notice to all y'all young folks, you will get there, and it's a blessing, amen, to get there, amen, it's a blessing to get there, I'm not going to hold you long today, today the Lord's put a word in my spirit. I'm not going to hold you long today. We are in what we call Advent season. According to Western Catholicism, now Eastern Catholicism and Western Catholicism is different in their holidays, Christian holidays. And most Protestants that celebrate holidays, celebrate the holidays based upon Western Catholicism. And according to Western Catholicism, as the church has patterned itself, the Advent season usually starts anywhere between November 27th and December 3rd. Its origin is not really known. There are some who, who cite St. Gregory as he tells us what Bishop Perpetuus did back in around 490 uh, AD. But it has a lot of 
history and throughout the century it has been changed. I am aware and acute learn of all of Catholicism, whether it be Eastern or Western Catholicism. I've never really patterned myself after it because of sometimes we get locked in tradition and overlook the Bible. If you noticed the Sunday school lesson this morning, it's coming from Luke and Gabriel muted Zechariah because of his doubt. Zechariah had been assigned to work in the temple and it was his job to burn the incense uh, at the altar and that was a similar prayer. And he'd been praying that prayer so long that the prayer had become a ritual. And sometimes we can do things so long that we lose our real desire. It just become a ritual. When you read and study Advent from its church history standpoint, you also pick up St. Martin, which deal with Lent. And we read the Advent season history. You will discover in the first instant there were monks who fast certain days until the day of Christmas. So a lot of tradition why I don't beat up folks who do that. That's why I've never done that. But I, I'm a word preacher, which means I'm, I look at what the Bible says because there are some things you and I ought to do daily and not wait till a certain season to do it. And so the Advent season really, if you look at its intent from the Christian perspective, is a preparation of a commemoration to be celebrated. It is a preparation of a commemoration to be celebrated. If you look at the Bible, the people in Jesus' day were not really preparing for nothing. And none of them was expecting Christ except the wise men who had been following this, had seen this star. So as we go through this season, I don't want us to get, I don't want us to get lost in tradition and custom to where we forget the word of God. Because the only thing going to give you strength, real strength, is the word of God. Our custom, our tradition would not save us. Because there's a whole lot of custom and tradition if you ever decide to study divinity or study uh, religion, there's a whole lot of custom and, and tradition. And so we need to make sure that while we can appreciate customs and traditions, that we never allow the custom and tradition to overrule the word of God. I need to say it again, while we can appreciate custom and tradition, Never allow custom and tradition to overrule the word of God. And so according to the custom and tradition, this is the second Sunday of Advent. And the first Sunday dealt with hope. And the second Sunday dealt with peace. The next Sunday dealt with love. And then the final Sunday dealt with joy. And so I am ask that you will pray with me and pray that God will use me just for a moment. As I look at a scripture that I'm going to try to tie into the celebration of Advent. Let us pray. Father God, we pray right now that you would strengthen us and keep us 
in your holy name. I pray, God, that you give me strength now to, to meet this assignment. Hold me and speak to me that my preaching will be relevant in this moment and that your people, Lord, will leave edified and that you will be glorified. Father God, I need to decrease now and give you the praise for all that I know. Give you the praise for where you have guided me and how you have kept me. Allow me to decrease and you increase. These are your people. Bless now, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to use a colloquial expression for our subject today. Simply this, help is on its way. Help is on its way. I don't know about you, but have you ever been in a predicament that you're just waiting for help. I think all of us have been in a situation where somebody told us help is on its way. I want to use for a scripture Paul's conclusion of his letter to Ephesians to the church there at Ephesus in that sixth chapter verse 10 and 12 using a new living translation it says a final word be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firmly, a firm rather, against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. My sister and my brothers, there is a direct correlation to Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus to the coming of Jesus Christ. At the time of Christ's coming, Jerusalem was in a mess. Religious folks were bickering against one another. Pharisees against the Sadducees and yet all of them claim to know God. There were those who had sold out just so they could be on stage. It's known that the Sadducees sold themselves out to government so that they could be favored by government. The Pharisees thought they were the only people right and was going to heaven, or going to be in God's eye. And there were other Jewish sects that were bickering against themselves. And like then, the world was in a turmoil. But because God loved us, he wanted to make sure that we could have some help. 
I'm going to preach today. You see, the fact is that they too, like we are, are dealing with a spiritual warfare. And when I think about the Advent season, Bruce, I, 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 I remind myself that he came because there was a spiritual warfare. Those who loved God was not acting like God. And I don't need to tell you today that in this time right now, we have people who say they love God, but not acting like God. Y'all about to hear me today. Because, because this season is more than a man having a good time. But this season reminds me that God loves me and that he loves me so much that he wants to make sure that I am protected. Can I tell somebody something right now? You see, the battle is not won with a sword, but the battle is won with the mind. Y'all better get it. Yeah, yeah. And the first battle that you and I must fight it's the battle of the mind, and Satan is trying to destroy the mind. That's why our little boys and little girls are going away for every now. Because Satan knows if I can get to the mind, I can get to the action of the mind. Amen. Don't let anybody get in your mind. The battle is over the mind and not the body. This text has a direct correlation to the coming of Christ. Can I tell you, had not Christ come, there would be no Paul the right to say to put on the whole armor of God. Had not Christ come, there would be no armor to put on. Paul says here, he says a final word. Be strong in the Lord. Now, I want to cut across the cornfield, as I would say in my day, meaning I'm not going to keep you long. That's a whole lot of argument to the text, but I'm not going to keep you long. That's a whole lot of things I could say in the text, but I'm not going to keep you long. I'm going to cut across the cornfield. You see... Paul knew what the church of Ephesus needed. Ephesus was a time where Paul spent a lot of time in the mission field. Paul had to deal with the tradition of paganism in Ephesus unlike any other place. Where the goddess Diana was and folks were making money because they were Fashion little image of the goddess Diana. And anytime the word come forth, that somebody don't like the word. Because the word will expose folks where they are. The word will put a light on folks where they are. And there are folks that don't like the word of God because the word of God will show you up. Y'all better hear me today. Paul, Paul knew as he closed this letter, amen, if the church of Ephesus were gone to be successful, if the church of Ephesus was gone to be effective, they needed to put on something that could protect him. He knew that their protection did not lie in their ability to have many swords and soldiers, but he knew their protection lied in how they fought. It's the way you think that determines where you go in life. If your thinking is messed up, then your walking going to be messed up. You better listen to me today. Yeah, if you're, you don't like the way you're walking, then change your thinking. Paul says here, put on the whole armor of God. But first he, he commands them, be strong in the Lord. I need to tell somebody today that your strength is based upon your connection with Christ. I need to say it again. 
Your strength, your strength is based upon your connection with Christ. Weak connection, weak strength. I think I got somebody in the house who can testify that, amen, every now and then a light bulb flickers. Not because the switch is not on. The light bulb flickers because the wire is loose. Am I right, Lemmy? Every now and then a light will flicker. Not because the switch is not on, but the wire is loose. And so your strength, my strength, is based upon my connection with Christ. But Paul wanted them to know something else. He wanted to know that your strength and my strength does not come from ourselves. And so in the Greek, he used what we call a present imperative. But it's in the passive voice. And any time it's in the passive voice, it means something is acting upon you. Help me, Holy Ghost. And practical, Paul is saying, that, amen, that you got to allow the Holy Ghost to enable you. And so your strength is actually coming to exist because the God spirit is working within you. Good God Almighty. And I just want to leave and let somebody know today that your strength is based upon your connection with Christ. And then he says here, Put on the whole armor of God. In that particular imperative, it is what we call an Iris Miller imperative. In the English, we have two voices, the active and passive voice. But in the Greek, we have three voices. That's a Miller voice. And when you use that Miller voice, you're being commanded to do something that you're going to participate in the action of what you're doing. Put on the whole arm of God. Because when you put it on, you're going to receive a benefit. Somebody need to know when you put on the whole armor of God, you're going to receive a benefit. Do I have a witness here? Finally, in this text, amen, I want to bring to your mind that the devil does not play fair. The devil does not fight fair. Do I have a witness here? I'm trying to help somebody here today. Because this fight is over the mind. And you and I need to know that the devil does not fight fair. In this season, we have brothers and sisters falling out with one another. The devil does not fight fair. In this season, we have mother and daughters falling out with one another. The devil does not fight with fire. You are about to get this sermon today. The devil, amen, I have preachers fighting against one another. The devil does not fight fair. The devil have the pastor and the deacon mad at one another. The devil does not fight well. The devil have one member favoring another preacher over another preacher. The devil does not fight fair. You better learn today that the devil does not fight fair. You and I will take a vacation. But the devil never take a vacation. He's always on his job. You and I go to sleep at night. But the devil roams all night. I heard him in the Old Testament. I am going to and fro to see who can I devour. I need to tell somebody that the devil does not fight fair. And when we get this, we we'll understand the reason and the meaning to put on the whole armor of God. Church, the church is suffering. The church is suffering, y'all. We're getting ready to celebrate. We're preparing ourselves to commemorate Jesus Christ coming to this earth. But the fact, the church is suffering. I'm talking about the visible church. We are losing our influence to change the world because we ain't got so happy and caught up in our high five. But our high fives don't mean nothing. It's what you and I do when we leave here. It's how you and I walk when we leave here. 
It's how we love one another when we leave here. It's what we say when we leave here. We can put on a show here, but our show don't mean nothing to the world. The world is looking at what are we doing? Do we really love one another? Do we love one another? The devil has got to come into the church and flip the church with politics. More folks know what party they belong to and then knowing anything about Jesus Christ. Y'all better listen to me today. More folks now are worried about what I'm going to have something under the tree rather than worrying about who made the tree. Do I have a witness up in here? The devil does not fight fair. And then finally, I'm going to let you go. When I looked at this text, it says to me, when you know your enemy, you know how to fight your enemy. Y'all better hear me again. When you know your enemy, you know how to fight your enemy. God knew his enemy. Do I have a witness? God knew his enemy. And he knew how to fight the enemy. He knew that Adam and Eve were not prepared to fight the enemy. Do I have a witness? Y'all excuse me here because I'm a little different from my Southern Baptist preacher friends. Every time I stand up, I got to tell somebody about a, a dead and risen Christ. Do I have a witness here? God knew Bruce about his enemy. He knew that Adam could not handle his enemy. He knew that Moses could not handle his enemy. He knew that David could not handle his enemy. You see, God loved us. He loved us so much that he was making preparation, amen, to deal with his enemy. And in the gospel, according to Luke, you will find that God was making way to deal with his enemy. That you and I might have a chance in this life to glorify God and to love one another. Do I have a witness here? I said God knew his enemy. He knew that David and all his virtue could not handle the enemy. And so God, according to Luke, was making preparation to deal with his enemy. And that's a man by the name of Zechariah. And a little old lady by the name of Elizabeth. God is making preparation to deal with his enemy. What I'm trying to say to you, what preparation are you making to commemorate Jesus Christ on the fourth Sunday? Because when you read the gospel, God was making preparation to deal with the enemies. Zachariah and Elizabeth could not have no children. Zachariah had a particular order in the temple. His order was to pray to God. And Zachariah kept on praying to God. He prayed when he was a young man, but now Zachariah is old in age. And he's still praying to God. Can I tell anybody, don't give up when God don't answer your prayer right then and right there. When God does not answer your prayer right then and right there. He getting ready to do something special in your life. Do I have a witness here? Can anybody say, I pray to the Lord? He didn't answer my prayer right then and right there. But I'm here to tell you that he did something special and unique in my life. Do I have a witness here? Zachariah said, one day I was in the temple praying like I always prayed. And the angel showed up. Do I have a witness here? Every now and then God will show somebody up in your life to let you know I've heard your prayer. Do I have a witness? The angel showed up and said, Zachariah, I've been sent by God. I've always been in the presence of God. 
And I got a message for you today. God has heard your prayer. Do I have a witness? He said, now, Zachariah, your son going to come forth. And his name going to be John. But your son not going to be just for your glory. But your son going to be for the glory of Israel. What I'm trying to say is when God blesses you, your blessing just not for yourself, but your blessing for somebody else. Do I have a witness here? I need to say it one more time. When God blesses you, it's not just for you, but it's for somebody else. That's why we're so stingy every now and then. When God put money in your pocket, don't run the deal and spend it all for yourself. Stop by the wayside and help somebody else. When God blesses you, it's not just for you. Do I have a witness? I say when you know your enemies, uh, you'll know how to fight your enemies. Do I have a witness here? God say, I know that boy. I made him too. Uh, his name is Lucifer, and I'm tired of him right now. He been messing over my creation for a long time. Do I have a witness in here? He been confusing them for a long time, having them going this way and that way. But I'm getting ready to put him in his place now. He said, I'm, I'm preparing uh, for the fight. Uh, and uh, the Bible said that John uh, was the forerunner uh, for Christ. Uh, do I have a witness uh, in me, man? Every now and then you need somebody to go before you. Do I have a witness? Uh, don't get the high head, young folks. Uh, somebody went before you that made your way a little easy. Do I have a witness? Uh, we don't spend enough time uh, telling the young folks uh, somebody went before you to make your way a little easier. John was to go before Jesus uh, and to tell them about Jesus Christ, uh, a good God Almighty. I'm so glad uh, I got to leave you here that John did what he did. Uh, but I heard uh, the one day John uh, was baptized at the Jordan River and Jesus showed up. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, one day, uh, one day I was in a church hall uh, and Jesus showed up uh, at the age of nine, uh, sitting on a pew bank uh, at the age of nine. Uh, and Bruce, uh, he showed up uh, uh, in my life. Uh, do anybody else have a witness? Uh, has he ever showed up in your life? Uh, I don't know where you were when he showed up uh, in your life. Uh, Jesus uh, was at Jordan River when he showed up in John's life. Uh, but I was sitting uh, on a pew uh, in Morning Star Baptist Church. Uh, and he showed up uh, in my life. Uh, good God Almighty. I'm trying to leave you, but God been so good uh, to me. Uh, can I tell you, can I just testify? He's brought me, uh, he's brought me uh, a mighty long way. Uh, sound old folk, uh, but live long enough. Uh, you'll look back on your life. Uh, you'll see the traps uh, that God got you out of. You'll see how you stumble along the way. Uh, and God kept you. Somebody can say, I should have been dead, uh, but the grace of God uh, helped me. Uh, I'm trying to stop y'all, but God been good to me, Bruce. Uh, he brought me uh, a mighty long way. Uh, young folks uh, don't understand that, but live long enough, uh, and you'll look back on your life uh, when you were partying uh, all night long, uh, and God didn't kill you. In that moment, you'll look back uh, over your life uh, when you were in houses that uh, you shouldn't have been in, uh, and God brought you out. Uh, he's kept me uh, and brought me uh, a mighty long way. Uh, good God Almighty. And that's how I, I know uh, how to fight my enemy. I know uh, that Bruce, uh, you not my enemy. I know. Uh, you not my enemy, good God Almighty. When we stop seeing one another as enemies, 
and start seeing one another as children of God, we stop hating on one another and start lifting up on one another. Good God Almighty. And to do that, bruiser, you got to put on, put on, put on, put on the whole uh, armor of God. You got to learn how to take off a self and put on God. Say yeah, say yeah. I'm so glad, I'm so glad, y'all. He came down through 40 and two generations to help me understand my enemy and to put on, to put on the whole arm of God. Can I tell somebody, help is right here. Help is here. Look at your neighbor and tell them you got help. Look at your neighbor and tell them you got help. Because one Friday, one Friday, one Friday, they took him to an old rugged cross. One Friday, they buried him in a fiery tomb. But early, but early, early, that third and part of the day, got up, then he get up, got up, then he get up, all power in his hand. Tell your neighbor again, help is here, help is here. Help is here. Yeah! Yeah, yeah! How many know that help is on the way? How many know that help is already here? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's all right. know how good God has been to you. You can dance and don't care what nobody think about it. When you have a story to tell, you can tell your story. When you got a praise, you need to let out. You can let it out and don't worry about what nobody think about it. We're so grateful. We're so grateful that God loved us so much that he sent his son that he made preparation for us to be protected against our adversary thank you so much Bishop for such a powerful word on today the time now has come in which we will now respond to that word this invitation of Christian discipleship to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you 
have never made that confession of faith, ask the Lord to come into your life to be your Savior, to be your Savior, to be your Lord. And this is that opportunity to do so. We want you to know Jesus for yourself, church. Your mom might have known him. Your daddy might have known him. Your big mama might have known him. But you need to know him for yourself. If you will stand all over this place as we prepare our hearts and minds for the discipleship call. When this song is over, trouble. But the good news is Jesus wants to be a part of that. Do you know? Does he live in your heart? Do you believe? Do you believe that he died? When he hung on that cross, the Bible says that blood and water came from his side. As the Roman centurion pierced him. Do you believe the love that took him to the cross? can meet you right where you are. It came. So we ask today, do you know? Does he live? Does he live? Does he live in your heart? Put your hands together for the Lord on today. We have truly, truly been blessed in this worship service on today. Before we conclude this worship service, there are two things we want to put out in front of you. The first thing is Elder Helms, the leader of our men's ministry, is asking all men immediately following service to meet downstairs in the kitchen. All the men of the church to meet Elder Hams downstairs in the kitchen area. Also, we want to recognize the beautification ministry of this church. This church is beautiful. The decorations, we thank God for you, whoever leads that ministry. An awesome job, that team. What a joy it is to come into a beautiful place and to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 We recognize everyone on today. Amen. We thank God for our media ministry. Amen. Amen. As well. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction on today. The final blessing before you leave this place. It's hard.
peace and return in love. And remember, help is on the way. Amen. God bless you.